Hey guys, I'm going to try to wing another one here. Remember yesterday I told you that, uh, well, the last few vids when I made mention of it, and I illustrated it here beginning on the 28th, I think for sure, when this phi angle switched to relatively around the 180 degree mark, that that for sure indicate that... Uh, we have a connection from sun to the earth but I think also like I mentioned in some other videos my suspicions were that uh, nemesis the earth the big planet in front of the earth and the sun were all connected together and I think I may have found further evidence for this now you'll notice on the 28th when that connection became pretty solid everything jumped up solar wind speed jumped up temperature jumped up density didn't do too much at least not as registered on ace so I went back to this solar ham space weather tutorial and this chart here is actually an example of a CME detected by ace this was back in 2013, 316. It's a screenshot. So you can see what happens when a CME impacts ACE out here at the L1 Lagrange point, 930,000 miles in front of the planet. Remember, I told you yesterday the ACE and Discover are parked out here. It's like a little saddle area where they both rotate around with relative ease that much expenditure of uh, energy and that's in order to give an early warning so that we can power down all our satellites and computers and so forth whenever there's a CME on the way well what we're looking at here closely this is a CME impact to me it closely resembles what's going on right now see the temperature came up so normally it's these are Kelvin units K normally it hovered looked like it was hovering around a little bit below 5 there's the 0405 you might want to click the box down here to uh, enlarge the uh, viewing screen and then once the CME impact occurred it jumped up above five and it looks like it touched on six so right now on ace well let's look on discover because it's a little bit uh what's this okay here's discover it's a little bit more um fine-tuned because it's a newer satellite about 20 years newer than ace it's up there in the same spot, however. So, so I punched it back to uh, seven days as well. One minute sample, seven days. This is on Discover. And what's neat about this is you can drag the cursor through and it'll give you the data. Well, it's supposed to. But anyway, you can see it here, the 28th. That's when, there we go. So the phi angles were running pretty much above 180. You see the numbers here. So I'm looking at the blue, 300, 298. They were bouncing back and forth, but primarily it was indicating a backside connection with Nemesis, solar body behind the Earth. Is there anything above 180? It's not supposed to exist. <laughs> According to that solar ham space weather tutorial, we'll go back and look at that again, touch base again on that. So you can see it's mostly staying above 180 every once in a while. It flirted with a uh, Earth to Sun connect somewhere down below 180. But anyway, right around the 28th, that's when things changed. You can see we got a, immediately got a spike in density. Went way up. So that's like a 
I think that's when the sun connection happened and it got dragged into it. Maybe it was just a nemesis, earth, big planet connection. And then whenever the sun came on board, boom, the density went way up and spiked up to 4161. Now that's super high. Normal density is four to six atoms per cubic centimeter. So it was running around fairly normal. Then all of a sudden, this is when the sun came into the picture and we made that connect. So now all four bodies are connected together, in my humble opinion. Spiked all the way up to, well, there's 3701 showing there. Um, froze up again. And then as you can see, just like on that space weather tutorial, all of a sudden, boom, solar wind speed jumped up. Solar temperature jumped up. As recorded being recorded out there at the L1 Lagrange point. And you can see the connection. It's all hovering sort of around 180. And you can see the numbers here. See them on the blue I'm looking at now. That's the phi angle connection. So the sun's in the picture. And basically we're seeing stuff that would so it's accelerating since the sun became connected everything got accelerated now all four of these units are working together the uh, nemesis behind the planet we're connected through the earth through the big planet out here in front which you can see all the field lines thrown getting thrown in and i've been showing you that for quite a while go to my hypothesis number one and you'll see that uh, the big planet crossed ace and it's headed toward earth ever since October 16th and I mean that's why our magnetic fields looking so weak because now everything's connected in my humble opinion so right now these solar wind numbers inside the magnetosphere magnetopause being recorded by these goes 13 and 14 and 15 satellites here in the geosynchronous orbit indicated here by the broken line they're pretty well matching up now with and I'm looking at the purple pretty well matching up now with the solar wind numbers coming from the Sun so in other words we're in a basically stable environment right now as far as uh, everything's matching in my humble opinion and that's due to that four-way connection now here's the uh, tutorial again and these links are in my description box below the video here's the blue phi angle so as you can see zero or zero that means it's connection from the earth pointing at the sun if it's 180 it's a connection from the sun pointing to the earth so there's nothing above 180 you know, now ace that'll that's still calibrated at the zero to 360 range just like there that's the last seven days so that's when it happened on the 28th. That's when we made this four-way connection, in my humble opinion. Here's the last six hours. You can see it's still running pretty close to 180. So everything's connected right now. That's why you could see the velocity. It's all pretty much uniform in front and in back. And we're not getting all those big fluctuations thrown at us from that big planet in front because right now everything's connected so there's not a lot of instability but within this stability still have, it's pretty it's a pretty hostile environment for the planet we have a uh, high velocity this is the velocity 600 and uh, there's the color codes you can see it's all pretty uniform 
five, six hundred. Here's the density. Darker it is, the more dense. That's all pretty uniform. You can see we're not getting those waves coming through from that big planet that I used to point out, which had to be coming from there because the solar wind speed wasn't fluctuating that much as recorded out at the L1 Lagrange point. We were getting all these waves thrown at us. Density and velocity. I don't know what happened to... Okay, I clicked it. So, and then there's the pressure. You can see the pressure is pretty much equalized as well, although it's high. So, we're in a definite squeeze action, but being that we're all connected, and here's the annual. This is the prediction they put out WSA and low solar wind prediction, SWPC. This, I got this marker here about the middle of the 30th, which is about where we're at. You can see that predicted plasma density is only around 5 coming from the sun. And the predicted velocity is it's below 5, somewhere around, eh, say, 475 or thereabouts. So let me go on here and let this play through just so you can watch it for a minute. I got these three synced. They're playing together. These two are synced together. So watch these field lines here. These blue field lines. And you're getting a few spikes coming through there because now this is toward the end of the run. Right now I think you're seeing those um, elevated spikes coming through being thrown at the front of the planet because you see the IMF connection, whereas it was stable, pretty well stable for quite a long period there. This is the one day on Discover. I pulled I dialed it back. You can see the last few hours, the interplanetary magnetic field connection was breaking up. So that's what you see here. When you get instability in the interplanetary magnetic field, you see these waves coming through. So, basically, for the last two, since the 28th, and now we're at the 30th, so it's been about two, two days, I've had a pretty stable connection between all four, all four bodies. Nemesis behind, Earth, big planet or planets out in front of the Earth, and then the Sun. And that's going to be subject to change, I'm sure. But that's why things have been relatively stable, even though everything's been elevated front and back. That's why I say we're definitely in a squeeze play. MLSO, they didn't give us anything yesterday we could still get something today it's possible it's only got about a minute and a half left I'll let this run through for you we only have little two little spots of missing time I saw the solar run right at the beginning of the run solar wind went up to about 8 8 12 and then the highest I saw was in the sevens got a 30 minutes of missing time around in this area and 30 minutes of missing time around in this area. But other than that, it's a pretty clean run. Watch these blue interplanetary magnetic field lines. Remember I mentioned the Faraday cage? I think these are all coming from Nemesis. And you see how everything's just swaying back and forth like it's a gentle breeze. Basically, I mean, when you see, I mean, it gets scrambled every now and then. Especially when Earth's trying to uh, expel all this plasma energy that's building up around <clears throat> thereabouts. But for the most part, looking kind of lazy. I'd still say the magnetosphere is getting weaker. And these blue field lines are coming from Nemesis. So watch how far they creep toward the Earth. And... Running out of time. God bless. Peace. And I'm 